This is a biscuit, a rich tea biscuit. The greatest biscuit known to man. Oh yes, look at that. Woo! It snaps, it breaks, it crunches. To preserve a biscuit, we need to keep it somewhere airtight. A tin, a biscuit tin, a Tupperware box with a lid, or perhaps a jar. Left out bare to the wind, our biscuit will draw the moisture out of the air and become soft. This is a muffin, it's cake. It's kind of pointless, but whatever, people like it. I don't know why. It's soft and it's moist, and if we wanted to preserve this, we would keep it somewhere airtight, like a tin or this unnecessarily large plastic container for what? Four cakes? Why? We could pop them in a jar and seal it up because if we left them out, the air would draw out the moisture, making them dry, stale, right? Seriously. Two different things with two different characteristics, yet we do the same thing to them both in order to preserve their characteristics, to keep them fresh. We don't put this inside there, do we? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. One muffin alone in a biscuit tin is enough to make all the biscuits go soggy. It would even itself out. The biscuits draw the moisture going soggy. The muffin gets the moisture drawn out of it, becoming stale and everything is ruined. And that may seem obvious, but when we are trying to preserve our homemade bread, this is exactly what we're trying to do, yet crossing our fingers and hoping everything stays fresh. Hey, home bakers. Keeping our homemade bread fresh is the holy grail, isn't it? But bread isn't just bread, and there are different kinds of bread that require different keeping conditions. Nobody ever talks about this, and I don't know why. If you were to go to a baker uh, somewhere where you live, if you can find one, and get a freshly baked, crusty loaf of bread, does the baker wrap it up in cling film before they give it to you? Put it in a plastic box with a lid on? Go, there you go, mate. Enjoy that. See you later. No. Why? Because this. Wait, let me sort this out. Let's take that muffin out. The biscuits are the crust, the crispy, crunchy, dry outside of the bread, and the muffins are the moist and soft inside. The crumb. Keeping them airtight will even out the two, the crust and the crumb, making the crust kind of tough and moist and chewy, and making the crumb kind of crumbly and stale. The whole thing would even itself out and it wouldn't be a very nice slice of bread anymore, would it? Bread tins, bread bins, plastic boxes, food bags, cling film, tin foil, Tupperware. All these things are airtight and so you'll lose a differentiation between the crust and the crumb and that sucks. For the contrast to survive, we need to let our bread breathe. Cloth bread bags are a good idea. I don't have one, but what I do have is a bakery jack proving cloth it's a tea towel. I keep it just for my bread so it doesn't have any kind of soapy smells and you can wrap stuff up in here to keep all the crumbs contained and protect the bread from, what are we trying to protect bread from anyway? Flies? The cat? I don't know. These ideas uh, let the bread breathe in a similar way that a paper bag would do or the classic cut side down on a chopping board. It's best for those crusty breads and they won't last forever though, will they? More on this later. Plastic things and airtight stuff does have its place though. For those breads with the same characteristics throughout, I'm talking about soft crust and soft crumb. Things like iced buns, oh, hot cross buns, stolen, brioche, uh, the semolina subs from the club, or the honey and blueberry plat loaf from bread every day. Keep them airtight in something, a bag or a tin, to keep the moisture in and stay soft in the crust and crumb, because the bun is the cake of the bread world, isn't it? Though vastly superior than actual cake, let's face it, come on. We don't want them to go dry, yeah? Will it be exactly as you baked it? No, but let me ask you this question. Is a cake exactly as you baked it? Is it? We all say, don't we? Cakes keep well, don't we? We all say it, cakes keep well though. How come our bread doesn't keep that well? But is it not true? That 20 minutes after baking a cake is when a cake is at its best, when the outside is kind of crispy, crunchy, tacky in your teeth, when you chew it and the inside is warm and soft and delicious. After that moment, it just becomes cake. Kind of overrated, slightly pointless, 
I've never understood cake. But anyway, I digress. Airtight is also essential when it comes to freezing your bread. By far the best way to keep your bread fresh is to freeze it after you've baked it and it's totally cool. Put it in a bag like this and stick it into the freezer. When you want it, leave it out on the kitchen side overnight to defrost. Put it back in the oven, eight to 10 minutes on the same temperature that you baked it at and it will be 99.9753789% as good as it was when it was freshly baked. I do it all the time. I even do it for live television and everybody eats it and goes, wow, this fresh bread is amazing. Don't tell anyone. If you're baking in advance, slightly underbake your bread so it has minimum color on it. And that way, when you bring it back, the crust won't be too crusty and end up kind of smashing up into crust shrapnel all over the place, in your eyeballs, in your hair, and just dust. It's worth mentioning before we continue that supermarkets have infinite access to magical powders and fairy dust and synthetic materials to help their bread stay fresh for longer. And we at home don't. And why would we? Because surely one of the reasons why we make our own bread at home is because it's actually food, isn't it? We can't compete with the longevity of shelf life and the products that we buy in the shop. We just can't, and we don't actually need to. So let's just stop trying. Because that is the preservation thing taken to ex extreme, uh, uh, to the sacrifice of the flavor and texture of the actual product. Next, have you ever made a sandwich, like a really nice sandwich with butter in it, and mayonnaise perhaps, or sweet onion chutney, crispy bacon from the grill with a couple of slices of brie, lettuce, tomato, oh, and then did you ever make six more, wrap them in plastic, put them in the fridge? So you could eat one on Monday, on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. no. Why? Because it would be gross. But that's what they do in the shop though, isn't it? I think making a sandwich in advance is a flawed concept. It doesn't work, even if they did it with fresh bread. In fact, even more so probably, I don't know. You probably get away with it. If you're making a sandwich in the morning, you're taking it to work and eating it for lunch. If you tactically applied waterproofing materials to the interior of your bread sandwich, such as butter, that's what it's for, by the way. But you certainly wouldn't leave it for a few days. It just wouldn't work. The point I'm trying to make here is that ideally we would make it fresh and eat it fresh and move on with our day going, that was a nice sandwich. And if we can't do that, we can do our best to fresh things up again a little bit. I'm talking about putting a baguette in the oven for 10 minutes to bring back that differentiation between the crispy crust and the softy crumb to make a wicked sandwich. And if you are preparing lunch in advance, like I do when I come here for work, you know what I do? I don't even make a sandwich. I make a salad or a poke bowl or poke bowl. What even is that? Rice in a bowl? I don't know. Cornish pasty is the perfect portable lunch, isn't it? To be taken down a coal mine. But a sandwich in advance? No, no, no. I'm lucky because I work in a kitchen. I could just warm up a baguette, put that bacon and brie in it and eat it. Oh, not everybody is, but I certainly wouldn't make one and take it out somewhere. Not for tomorrow. You know, make it fresh and eat it at its best or fresh it back up if you can. And if you can't and you're making lunch in advance and you don't want it to be disappointing, make something that does transport really well. I don't think sandwiches do. Hey, I don't know, maybe they do. Certainly not if you've got to put it in the fridge though. Oh, refrigerated sandwich. Well, fresh bread is not a biscuit. Yeah, and I know I'm using biscuits to uh, describe part of the bread, certainly at least, but bread uh, is not to be treated in the same way as a biscuit. What I mean by that is that these stay fresh, crisp, crunchy, as long as I keep them in this jar, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether I want one or I don't want one. So therefore, by default, the fact that it's always here, whether I want it or I don't, makes me not appreciate it anymore. I don't care about it. In the same sense that on Netflix, there's two series of Is It Cake available at all times, whether I wanna watch it or I don't. So I just don't watch it, because it's there. And like, why? You know what I mean? Whereas the Great British Bake Off is on on a Tuesday night at eight o'clock and I can't watch it before then. So I'll wait for it to arrive and then when it's on, I'm watching it. Cup of tea in hand, phone off. I value it more, because it's not available all the time. Bread is not a biscuit. Bread is bread. To drive home this point better in, a, in the classic Bake With Jack style where I take a irrelevant, massive, gigantic detour finally arriving at the point, let's talk about chicken for a moment. Chicken is chicken. You buy it, you roast it up on a Sunday and march it ceremoniously to the table upon its carving board. Then we unsheath 
our carving knife that never sees the light of day in the week and then we sharpen it on our belt. People do that? I don't know. And carving begins. Light meat or dark, yeah? Drumstick and a couple of slices of breast. Extra skin, wing, mm, I've got you covered. It's celebrated and enjoyed for what it is in that moment in time. And then tomorrow's cold chicken and mayonnaise sandwich is pretty exciting, isn't it? Mmm, salty. Coronation chicken, people still make that? Pop it in a jack of potato. Yes! Then we strip the carcass of all the weird and wonderful pieces and cook it down in a homemade barbecue sauce and make barbecue chicken tacos for the kids in the week. Woo! And then the best bit, controversial, the bones, broth. Stock, ginger, coriander and garlic infused ramen noodle soup. Oh my gosh, yes. We use it for what is best at every step of the way and we enjoy it for what it is. We don't fixate on that Sunday roast chicken deliciousness and say, I wish I could preserve that and have that. On tap to hand every single day of the week, whether I fancy it or I don't. And by the way, I don't want it to go off either. Don't treat bread like a biscuit, treat bread like a chicken. <laughs> Let us not obsess about preserving what it is in that moment in time and instead enjoy it for what it is later down the line. Making use of it and celebrating it at its various stages of life, my gosh. Bread is amazing on day one. It's a triumph of your effort and a massive reward for the work that you've done. It's wicked. Then on day two, oh, it's the best toast you've ever had in your whole life. French toast even, my goodness, come on. As it starts to go stale, it's croutons. Holy smokes, you can make sweet ones with donuts if you want, sprinkle with sugar and a little bit of butter and serve it up with ice cream, and berry compote. Or savory like, crispy, and then you could possibly imagine ones out of ciabatta and focaccia with a little bit of garlic oil and a blanket of freshly grated parmesan sprinkled on the top for you to dunk into your delicious hot soup or dress in some sort of creamy salad dressing. It's the jaggedy crumbs fried in olive oil with garlic and thyme that you sprinkle atop your risotto. Or coat your crispy deep fried katsu chicken before you dip it in your katsu sauce. Seriously, there's so much more to your homemade bread than a really lovely sandwich and then kind of six or seven disappointing slightly pappy ones that follow. There's a reason why modern supermarket bread is rubbish and it's because it's not made to be tasty and delicious and wonderful. It's made to take your money and last forever. But nothing does, nothing lasts forever. We can all get caught up in the act of preservation up to a certain point of it all. Or we can appreciate the things that we have now for what they are in the moment and turn that into something incredible. Don't watch another video after this one, will you? Drop your thoughts in the comments box underneath this video and then go and make some bread because it's wicked, isn't it? Let's face it, see ya.